coming up on Locked on Dodgers. The Dodgers got shut out in the gold glove voting. We will talk about uh, whether or not Mookie Betts got robbed. The Dodgers also made decisions on all of their uh, team options for contracts for next year. Uh, no big surprises there, but some little surprises and uh, plenty to talk about. And then Yoshinobu Yamamoto was officially posted by his Japanese team, which means he will be coming to the United States and hopefully to the Dodgers. We'll talk about that. That's what's on tap. So let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Or even better, go ahead and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. Then you can be an everydayer just like we are. If this is your first time with us, I am Jeff Snyder. My normal co-host is Vince Samperio, although it's just me today. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans just like you are. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room, so we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fan's perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And uh, I don't know if FanDuel actually takes bets on the Gold Glove Awards, uh, but uh, those were announced on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, and the Dodgers had a lot of finalists and they had zero winners. Uh, and we'll just run through those really quick. We talked about the finalists and they were announced. Freddie Freeman was a finalist uh, at first base. And I guess to clarify again, what finalist means is the voting was already done. Uh, it means that Freddie finished in the top three in voting. Um, doesn't mean like finalists would would suggest that these are the three people who up for it. And now we're going to vote between these three. No, you, they vote among all the first basemen and the guys who get the top three votes are announced as the finalists. And then a couple weeks later, they announce the winner. Uh, it's just a way of dragging out the suspense, but Freddie Freeman, Carlos Santana and Christian Walker were the three top vote getters at first base. Uh, Walker won the award and Walker was absolutely the right choice. Walker, was the best defensive first baseman in the National League clearly this year. Uh, Freeman, in fact, you know, Fre Freddie is solid at first base. I, I think, you know, and, and I haven't dug into Fre Freddie was significantly below both Walker and Santana defensively this year. Uh, I don't know if there were other guys who uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Freddie got uh, votes because of his reputation, because he does have a reputation as a great defensive first baseman and he's, he's very solid. Uh, but he, you know, Christian Walker was the right choice there. Uh, second base, no Dodgers were finalists. Third base, believe it or not, Max Muncy was not a finalist. Shortstop, uh, no finalist. Uh, left field, the Dodgers had David Peralta as a finalist or a top three vote getter, uh, along with Ian Happ and Eddie Rosario. Uh, Happ won the award. It wouldn't have been crazy for Peralta to win. He, he wasn't going to win, but uh, you know, it, it was kind of all three of those guys, Happ, Peralta, and Rosario, all have – strengths and weaknesses as defensive left fielders. And uh, they went with Hap uh, and, and he had, you know, he had 12, 12 assists, uh, had decent range. You know, he, he was a solid left fielder uh, and not a lot of competition in the National League. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been a travesty if Peralta had won, but it's not a travesty that Hap won. Uh, center field, the Dodgers didn't have a finalist, but interestingly, Alec Thomas and Michael Harris, who are both, elite defensive center fielders. They were two of the three finalists, but the winner was Brenton Doyle of the Rockies, a rookie who has a great, great arm. He's crazy fast, great. Uh, he, he's a very good defensive center fielder. And so, uh, and, and playing center field in Coors Field is obviously a big deal. So uh, I, I'm actually pretty happy for Brenton Doyle. I, I like him. And, uh, you know, if he can learn how to hit, he's going to be a really good player. Then right field, Mookie Betts, Fernando Tatis, and Lane Thomas. Honestly, Mookie didn't play enough right field to deserve the Gold Glove Award in right field. Uh, Fernando Tatis was clearly the best defensive right fielder in the National League. T T Tatis, like the left fielders, as I said, 
Tatis has his weaknesses as a defender, but he's so athletic. He's got a lot of speed. He makes up for a lot of the weaknesses with his speed and his arm is ridiculous. And so like Tatis absolutely deserved that award. Um, you know, he, it's the first time in, in seven years that Mookie hasn't won a gold glove in right field. And a lot of that was simply because he didn't play a lot of right field. But even if Mookie had been a full-time right fielder, I do think Tatis, even on a per inning basis, was a better defensive right fielder than Mookie this year. Um, you know, which, which you know didn't help him. But uh catcher, Dodgers didn't have a finalist. Uh Gabriel Moreno won. Patrick Bailey would have been a, a defensible choice too, but Moreno was very, very good. Pitcher, Dodgers didn't have a finalist. I think Zach Wheeler won. Uh, and then the utility player. That was the Dodgers' best chance. As we talked about when they announced the finalists, utility gold glove was the Dodgers' best chance to actually win one of these this year. The three finalists were Mookie Betts, Tommy Edmond, and Hassan Kim. All three of these guys you can make a strong case for. Um, the, the winner was Kim. And it, it's not a bad selection. Kim is... Very, very good defensively. The one edge that I believe Mookie Betts should have had over both Edmund and Kim is that uh, that Mookie's positions were different. Like Kim, he played second base, shortstop, and third base. Like, and, and I get that the utility gold glove is designed for guys who play multiple positions, regardless of what they are, because they don't get enough playing time to earn a gold glove at one position. And so... Kim absolutely qualifies for the the multi position the utility gold glove award uh but Mookie playing right field and second base and shortstop is so much different than than what Kim did uh and and also Mookie played a lot at both right field and second base he played 70 games at second base 16 at shortstop, 107 in right field. Now, you'll notice that adds up to uh, 193 games. There aren't 193 games. But that's what Mookie bounced between positions a lot within games. Uh, Kim played 32 games at third, 20 at short, 106 at second. So he was mostly a second baseman who played some at other, and that adds up to 158, which means he didn't bounce between positions very often within a game. Uh, and so. If I was voting, and Mookie did win the uh, the Sports Info Solutions, the, the now I can't remember, Fielding Bible Award for Utility Player, um, and I think they probably put more value on that, the, the true utility. I probably would have voted for Mookie uh, because I think he's more of a true utility guy, uh, actually playing, legitimately playing multiple positions, playing a lot at multiple positions. But... I'm also biased because I'm a Dodger fan. I'm a Mookie fan. And so I can't say for sure what I would do if I were an unbiased voter. Um, but that, I think that's the case for Mookie is that he was more of a true utility player than the other two guys were. But Kim won. Edmund wouldn't, wouldn't have been a travesty. All three of those guys, uh, it was definitely going to be very close. And I, I, I said last week or whenever it was when they announced the, the finalists, I said, I hope that Kim won the award at second base so that he would then uh, so that Mookie could win the utility one because Kim was very, very good defensively. And I knew he was going to win a gold glove somewhere. And so when he didn't win it at second base, I, I was pretty sure he was going to win it at utility and he did. So Dodgers get shut out on that. Not the end of the world. Gold glove is not, it, it means something. Uh, and obviously having Mookie's streak of gold gloves broken is, is, lousy but overall you know it, it doesn't really matter a ton uh, but i would have liked to see mookie win one uh the other ones I, I i didn't think any other dodgers deserved a gold glove i do think mookie deserved one but you can't really say that kim didn't deserve it either so uh i'm gonna come back in a minute the dodgers also made news this weekend to, uh, making decisions on all five of their remaining team options for next year so we'll talk about that so thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Tonight is Monday Night Football. It is the... Uh, Chargers against the Jets. Do you have a strong feeling one way or the other between the Chargers and the Jets? 
it, it's a tough one. Chargers are three and four. Jets are four and three. You know, uh, neither team's a world beater. But if you feel strongly about the Chargers or about the Jets, place a five dollar bet with FanDuel, and if they win, you get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets, and that is money you can use to uh, make more bets on FanDuel stuff you're more confident about. Find something you're confident in, bet the five bucks, get your 150 bucks. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And I'm back. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Especially want to thank our everydayers. We love talking Dodgers with you, and we appreciate you being with us every weekday morning. If you're not an everydayer, it's easy to become one. Just watch or listen every weekday morning. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the YouTube comment section. If you're listening on the podcast, we'd love to hear from you through social media or email. You know, I'll give you all that contact info at the end, like I always do. Uh, also want to remind you, even though baseball season's over, there's plenty of baseball content on Sirius XM and the SXM app. You got the MLB network app, you've got, uh, or channel, all sorts of Dodgers or baseball content, including some Dodgers content all off season long, uh, to keep you up to date. And, and you can listen to this podcast on the SXM app just by searching for locked on Dodgers. So the Dodgers had six team options going into this off season. Uh, we talked at the end of last week about one decision that they made or that they cleared up. Max Muncy was one of those team options. And rather than exercising their $14 million option, they signed M- Muncy to a two-year extension for $24 million with a team option for 2026 uh, for $10 million. Uh, going, uh, going beyond that, they had five pitchers. Yeah, five pitchers. Uh, Lance Lynn... They declined that option. That was a no-brainer. It was an $18 million option with a million-dollar buyout. Lance Lynn wasn't – he wasn't worth that. You know, it's not out of the question that he could be back with the team next year, uh, but, you know, it seems like he would be a plan C or D or E or F or G. Um, But that's kind of what he was at the trade deadline, and that's what they ended up with. So, uh, But they didn't exercise his option. Daniel Hudson, uh, Alex Reyes also had – team options and that the Dodgers declined. Uh, Not really surprising. uh, Hudson's was six and a half million dollars. If he wants to play next year, I'm sure the Dodgers would be interested in having him back uh, at a lesser salary. Alex Reyes, probably the same thing. It was a $3 million option. Uh, They weren't going to, he didn't play at all for them. It seems like his time's probably done, but you never know. Uh, And then Joe Kelly. $9.5 $9.5 million option that the Dodgers declined. He's one that I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see back with the Dodgers next year. We'll talk more about Joe Kelly in a second. The last team option, though, was Blake Trinan. And his option was somewhere between $1 and $7 million, but presumably much, much closer to the low end of that because it was based on playing time in 2023. And Blake Trinan and 2023 playing time is more of a joke than a uh, – Anything else? He played zero in 2023 after throwing just five innings in 2022. Uh, And so, but the Dodgers did exercise his option, uh, which could mean a lot of things, but it probably means they expect him to be healthy next year and pitch. Um, And it was a million bucks, you know, uh, obviously a million dollars is a lot of money, especially to you and me to the Dodgers. It's much less. And so, it made sense. Pick up the option and and see what happens if they think there's a chance he'll be healthy because when he is healthy, he's very good. Will he be healthy? Who knows? Uh, Dodgers probably know better than you or I do. Um, so, yeah, try, trying and I don't hate the move. I don't hate picking up the option. I am I don't like it either because I don't have any idea what his health is like, but I am interested to see what the Dodgers see in him and if he's healthy – you know, he could be good again. He's he's still, I mean, he's not young, but he's not crazy old. How old is Trinan? He's 35 years old. He'll be 36 next June. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's not terrible. Uh, going back to Joe Kelly, though. Kelly is a guy who I think the Dodgers would like to have back, and I think he would like to be back. Uh, Joe Kelly is a Southern California native. 
He grew up a Dodger fan. He likes, he's played for the Dodgers two different times. He likes the Dodgers and he pitched very well after coming over to the Dodgers at the trade deadline. It was obviously in limited duty. He only pitched 10 and a third innings with the Dodgers, but he allowed two earned runs. Uh, he was, he was really, really good for the Dodgers. Uh, struck out 19 batters in those 10 and a third. Like it was kind of elite Joe Kelly. Uh, he did walk too many guys. That's, that's part of Joe Kelly's story. Um, he was not great with the White Sox before they traded him to the Dodgers. He had an ERA around five with them. And so we saw, it's kind of funny, his strikeout rate was still good, but less than when he had with the Dodgers. His walk rate was better, uh, but his hit rate, like that was the big difference. He allowed 8.1 hits per nine innings with the with the White Sox. 29 hits in 39 and a third innings. No, 26 hits in 29 innings. Sorry, 29 and 39 was the overall. 26 hits in 29 innings with the White Sox, three hits in 10 and a third innings with the Dodgers. Uh, that was the difference. He was almost unhittable with the Dodgers. And, uh, you know, if that's something that he can be, yeah, the Dodgers are going to want him back. It, it, this was, we don't want to pay him nine and a half million bucks, but they may work out a deal for six or seven million bucks to bring Joe Kelly back. Uh, maybe even a two year deal, you know, at, yeah, you know, two years. 13 million bucks, something like that. Uh, and, you know, I think both sides would be happy with that, but we'll see. Maybe there will be more of a market for relief pitching than we know, than we think right now. So maybe somebody does come, you know, because when, when Kelly left the Dodgers two years ago, it was, uh, th they were interested in getting back together, but the White Sox offered him a lot more money than the Dodgers did. And so he took it. Maybe that'll happen again, maybe not. So he could be back with the Dodgers next year. I wouldn't be sad about that at all. Uh, so with that, I believe that puts the Dodgers roster at 36 players. I think they were at 34 uh, and then plus Muncie and Trinan. That puts them at 36. We know for sure they're going to add Landon Knack and Nick Frosso uh, to the 40-man roster, probably Hunter Fiducia too, which would, which would put them at 39 and uh, almost full 40-man roster. We talked last week about the roster crunch is coming in and guys who could be casualties of that roster crunch. We'll get more of that. This, this, you know, in the next couple of weeks, the Dodgers have another week or two to protect those guys from the rule five draft, the, the young guys, Frosso and Knack and, and Fiducia and maybe Jose Ramos, you know, there, there's other guys who are possibilities that'll come in the next week or two uh, leading up to the winter meetings. And, and at that point we may start seeing players get DFA would or, non-tendered or other ways of getting them off the roster and uh, and go from there. But we do know the fate of the team options. And that was a big question mark coming in. Uh, like I said at the beginning, no big surprises there. I think Blake Trinan qualifies as a minor surprise. Joe Kelly qualifies as a minor surprise. Um, but beyond that, it's kind of what we expected. So I'm going to come back in a minute. I'm going to talk about one guy who could potentially – Come to the Dodgers. That is Yoshinobu Yamamoto uh, from the Japanese, the NPB in Japan. He is being posted, which means in the next month and a half or so, he will have a major league team. And we will talk about him and the chances that, that could be the Dodgers. So thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please continue to keep it Locked On Dodgers. Hey, I am back. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. If you're not an everydayer, please become an everydayer just by watching and listening every weekday morning. Remember to check out SiriusXM and the SXM app for all your baseball needs and for this podcast if you so desire. And uh, let's talk a little bit about one guy. You know, obviously Shohei Otani is going to be a huge target on the on the Dodgers uh, radar this off season because he is the top free agent. In baseball. And, and, you know, everybody, like, everybody is saying the Dodgers are the favorites to sign Otani. I am continuing to take that with a grain of salt because nobody really, I, I don't think there are inside sources when it comes to Shohei Otani. I don't think that Otani talks to people who would leak information. I, so I, I just don't think that a ton of people really have a great idea where Otani wants to be. Hopefully it is the Dodgers. I would love to have him on the Dodgers. Uh, and, you know, 
Hopefully they can make something work. We'll see. Um, but beyond that, uh, Otani won't be pitching in 2024. He will hopefully be a pitcher later in this contract that he signs with the Dodgers or anybody else. Uh, but we know he won't be pitching in 2024. He will purely be a DH. Uh, and so the Dodgers still have needs at starting pitching. We, we've talked, they have a lot of depth. They have minor league depth. They have, you know, Walker Bueller's coming back. Uh, Bobby Miller obviously is coming into his own. Ryan Pepio has a lot of potential. Gavin, so, so many young starting pitchers to go with Bueller, but they probably need a stud or two in free agency or trade this offseason. And uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto is definitely a guy who would fit that bill. Uh, he is 25 years old. And he, since it debuting in the MPB, I'm looking at MLB trade rumor, trade rumors here. They put together some good summary on Yamamoto. Since debuting in MPB at 18 years old in 2017, his career ERA is 1.72 with a 26.4% strikeout rate. Over the last three seasons, even better, 1.42 ERA, 27.4% strikeout rate, and just a 5.1% walk rate. So he's striking out five times as many guys as he's walking. He's striking out a lot of guys. He is, he, he's elite. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's always, there's always a little bit of question. How will that translate from MPB to major league baseball scouts who uh, last year when Kodai Senga came over from Japan, scouts comparing the two said that Yamamoto is a full grade ahead of Kodai Senga. Senga was very, very good for the Mets this year. He, uh, posted a 2.98 ERA as a rookie. Uh, just very, very good. 202 strikeouts and 166 innings for Senga. So I'm, the strikeout stuff carries over. The the run prevention carries over to some extent. I don't expect Yamamoto to come over and have a 1.42 ERA, uh, but having a mid-twos ERA seems very, very likely. And if he can do that, that is – that would be huge for what the Dodgers are looking for. Um, now, how much it's going to cost is the big question. Um, Senga got five years, $75 million. Yamamoto is going to get a lot more than that. And, and there are there are different projections at different uh, – what, what did I see? Let me find this. Um, over at, at The Athletic, Tim Britton – did some projections on different different players and what they're likely to make in free agency. His prediction, prediction, projection, seven years, two hundred and three million dollars. That is, what's that? Twenty nine million dollars a year. Uh, I think that's reasonable. And, and you know, the seven years, he's only twenty five years old, and so uh, at seven years, two hundred and three million. I think the Dodgers would definitely be interested at that price. Um, if, if somebody else does, uh, you know, and there's the posting fee. And so a posting fee on a seven year, $203 million deal would be 32.3 million. And so the total investment, the total cost of the Dodgers would be just over 235 million over the seven years. Um, I think that's reasonable. And he is Yamamoto could definitely fill a hole. I don't think he is the entire answer for the Dodgers this offseason, but he is very, very good and would definitely solidify that starting rotation, especially if they could add one one or two more guys. Uh, one of the guys, there were reports that Shota Imanaga, another Japanese pitcher, that the Dodgers are interested in him. Uh, he's being posted also, and uh, the, the Dodgers have shown interest in him. Imanaga is 30 years old. Uh, definitely a different type of pitcher. He's a lefty. He isn't the ace that that uh, Yamamoto is. But Imanaga, he's pitched very well uh, in in the World Baseball Classic. He uh, he pitched the gold medal game against the U.S. So most of us have probably seen him pitch if you watched that game between the U.S. and Japan. And he is he another guy strikes out a lot of guys, doesn't walk many guys, shows a lot of command. And he's, you know, just a legit, like his ERA is mid twos uh, in Japan, which means, you know, probably low threes in the United States, but a very good pitcher. And, you know, it's probably not likely that the Dodgers get Yamamoto and Imanaga, but it's not crazy. And, you know, 
it, it, the Dodgers just could, could go full uh, NPB this year and go with uh, go after Yamamoto and Imanaga and Otani and have that be their three big additions. If the Dodgers could add those three guys. That's a ton of money, uh, but it would also be, I mean, that is a solid offseason. They'd still have little holes they need to patch here and there, but you get those three guys, you've you've addressed the starting rotation, you've addressed the offense in, in a lot of ways. Uh, it would be pretty impressive. It's not likely they're going to get all three, um, but it's likely they're going to get somebody on that list, uh, one at least of those three guys, um, because they are big spenders and they have big needs. And so, uh, you know, it's not out of the question they could get all three and definitely not out of the question that they'll go after all three. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about Yamamoto. There have been some concerns. Yamamoto is, uh, actually Yamamoto and Imanaga both are on the shorter side. Uh, I think they're both, I think they're both five foot 10. Yeah. Shota Imanaga is five foot 10. I'm just, don't mind me. I'm just typing. You know, Yamamoto is also five ten, And so, that's it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's actually, it's funny. They're both listed at five foot 10, 176 pounds. Uh, interesting that they have the same height and weight listed. Obviously, Yamamoto is a righty. Imanaga is a lefty. Um, petite guys, small, short guys have had success in the big leagues, but it's not as common. Most of the most successful pitchers are big guys. And, you know, when you look for durability, all those things, but that was that was the knock against Pedro Martinez when the Dodgers traded Pedro Martinez uh, back in whenever that was nineteen ninety two or whatever. Part of the reason was they were concerned that he was going to uh, that he wasn't going to hold up because of his size. Pedro was listed at five eleven one seventy, um, so basically the same size as these two guys. Pedro held up just fine. He was an elite pitcher. Very, very good. And yeah, I mean, he maybe didn't, he wasn't like he, Pedro's last elite season came at age 33. And, and so that's, you know, that's kind of the concern that you have because I do think if Pedro was bigger and stronger, maybe he does have a longer career. But uh, when we're talking about, uh, you know, Yamamoto, seven years starting with his age 26 season. Well, in Pedro's seven years, starting with his age 26 season, here's what we had. Uh, 1998, 289 ERA, second in the Cy Young voting. 207 ERA, first in Cy Young voting. 174 ERA, first in Cy Young voting. 239 ERA uh, in a shorter season. 226 ERA, second in Cy Young voting. 222 ERA, third in Cy Young voting. And uh, 390 ERA, fourth in Cy Young voting. Like in those seven years, uh, Pedro Martinez was a superstar. And so it's a 252 ERA over those seven years. Dodgers would love to get that. I'm not saying Yamamoto is going to be Pedro Martinez, but Pedro Martinez is an easy guy to point at and say, if you've got the stuff, being small isn't going to hold you back. Uh, and the fact that Yamamoto has had seven years of success in MPB at that size you know, I, I feel good about him. And so you never know what's going to happen, but I would love to see the Dodgers go after him hard. I think they will go after him and maybe they get him. That would be for me after Otani Yamamoto is the big target this off season. If they could get him, it's a huge boost to them for next year because, you know, having that stability in the rotation, uh, it, it would be huge. And so I, I'm excited about that. I'm excited that Yamamoto is officially coming over. Uh, the, his team announced it right after they lost the Japan series. Uh, they announced that they will be posting him. And so he is on his way, whether it's to the Dodgers or somebody else. And, uh, you know, it could be a Japanese winter for the Dodgers. That would be pretty exciting. That's about all I have for today. Um, there's going to be plenty more to talk about in the coming days. We've got, you know, awards announcements coming up in the next week or so. We've got uh, a lot of stuff coming up. And so we will probably get finalists for some of these awards. We know Dave Roberts is going to be a finalist for the manager of the year award. We know that uh, Mookie Betts is going to be a finalist for 
the MVP award. It'll be interesting to see if Freddie Freeman is like, we know that Acuna and Mookie are going to finish one and two in that order. And then we know that Freddie Freeman and Matt Olson are going to finish three and four in some order. Uh, the question will be uh, if Freddie is a finalist, we know he finished third. If he's not, we know he finished fourth. Uh, we'll find that out in the next few days. And then we'll find out the actual winners uh, shortly after that next, you know, in a week and a half or so, I think. So plenty to talk about this off season. We appreciate you being with us. Keep being with us every weekday morning. If you have specific things you want us to talk about, you have questions, whatever, we'd love to hear them. Just shoot them over to us. You can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Locked On Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at VinceSense91. I'm on Twitter at Snydog, S-N-I-D-O-G. Our, D- our DMs are open for both of us. You can send us an email anytime you want, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com. Or you can send us a voicemail or a text message at 323-863-LOCK5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow.